Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. In his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Yes, sirree. Little wonder many a He-Man Hollywood movie star goes for this breakfast. It's swell-tasting Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with milk or cream and fruit. These king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of rice or wheat pack a man-sized taste wallop. They're good for you. They're shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Tomorrow, sure... Treat yourself swell. Enjoy this breakfast treat. Eat Quaker puff rice or Quaker puff wheat. Sergeant Preston was recovering from a bullet wound, and the inspector had ordered him to take a leave. So he packed his saddlebags and rode into the hills northwest of Dawson, with King romping by his side. Both man and dog looking forward to two weeks of hunting and fishing. They spent the second night at the McLaren mine, and the following morning made their way to the top of the ridge between McLaren and Barton Creeks. As the sergeant reined up at the top, he heard a volley of shots. Halfway down the slope, he could see two men who had taken cover and were shooting at each other. One of them had olive skin and dark curly hair. The other was blonde and dressed like a cowboy. The darker man's hunting cap and the cowboy's Stetson had been placed on the rocks in front of them. The sergeant laughed. Recognize them, King? Yes, a couple of old friends of ours. We'll give them something to think about, steady fella. He led his mount into a grove of trees and then dropped to the ground at the top of the ridge. Down, King. Down, boy. All right, you two, you're covered. What I'll try to turn this way. Just throw your guns out in front of you. Sergeant Blue Tape, there is a skunk at the top of the ridge. Better do what it says, Pierre. No sense in dying to save that doll on two bits. Raison. Monsieur, uh, we will give you all the money we have. Maybe I'd better shoot first and collect afterwards. Uh, me no. Pierre, there's something mighty familiar about that boy. <laughs> Who are you, mister? I'm that New York lawyer you ducked in the Yukon. Why well, so? It is only what you deserve for eating that little boy who asked to carry your bag. Don't sound like no lawyer to me. You're right. I'm a friend of his. I own the cafe you shot up in 40 Mile. But, monsieur, you have already put us in jail for that. We have paid you back for the damage. Sergeant Preston has made us pay back every penny. Oh, wait a minute, Pierre. That's who it is. Come on. That's Sergeant Preston up there. <laughs> Sergeant, how can you do such a thing? How can you play the cat with the mouse when the mouses are such good friends of yours? All right, all right. Come on, King. What I want to know is what you two mouses have been up to. Well, we have been up to nothing, oh, King. You've got a hard-hearted mess. King doesn't approve of you any more than I do. <laughs> Not any more, maybe, but just as much. <laughs> you like us, don't you, King? <laughs> Sure you do. Why were you two shooting at each other? Oh, it is only a game, Sergeant. We do not shoot at each other. We shoot at the hats. You owe me $100 tax. I have put two holes in yours. You have only put one in mine. Shot in a brim don't count. You don't have a brim on yours. Oh, you are a thief, a robber. <laughs> <laughs> and you're an ornery dry girl from Sidewater. Well, is this a bad thing he has called me, Sergeant? The way he said it, it was a compliment. Oh, oh merci, thanks. Do not have to pay the $100. Yeah, thanks. 
Uh, how come you're not wearing a uniform, Sergeant? I'm on a vacation, thanks. Are you? <clears throat> uh, well, uh, 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 me no. Uh, we are uh, prospecting. Huh? I can see your camp down there by the creek, Pierre. I don't see any shovels or picks. What are you prospecting for? Trouble? Oh, me no. I thought you made me a promise when you left Dawson that you'd go to work. Oh, we're looking for work, Sergeant. Oh, that's fine. And know of anybody who needs a good cop, aren't you? Not in the Yukon. Oh, Hudson Bay Company could use a good trapper, maybe. Not in summer. Yeah, you, you see how hard it is to find work, Sergeant? Yes, Tex. But you two are in luck. How, how do you mean that? The McLaren Mining Company is on the other side of this ridge here. They'll hire any man they can find. But to dig the gravel? To throw it into the sluices from morning to night? Sixteen dollars a day. Uh, Sergeant, I, I don't like to talk about this, but I've been trouble with shooting pains in my head lately. Yeah, and I have the shooting pains in my feet. That's whenever the idea of going to work comes up. Oh, me too. All, all the time, Sergeant. The only shooting pains you two have are in your trigger fingers. Work won't hurt either one of you. And you'll be doing a friend of mine a great favor if you go to work at the mine. Oh, the, the armory that owns it is a friend of yours? The girl that owns it. The girl? Yeah. She is beautiful, perhaps. Well, why don't you go and see for Well, it, it won't hurt us to do that, Pierre. Oh, me no. Good. I think you'll take the job. I'll be camping around here, and I'll drop back to McLaren in a few days to see how you're making out. Come on, I'll help you get your gear together. Oh, it uh, would be better to go tomorrow, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, sort of late today. Yes, nearly 10 o'clock, but if you hurry, you'll be in time for dinner. You'll find out what a good cook John is. Oh, this is something you've not said before. <laughs> Let's go, Pierre. Yeah, we... Tex and Pierre broke camp and saddled their horses. Easy, baby. Easy, huh? Goodbye, Sergeant. Hold on, Bye, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The sergeant watched the men ride over the ridge before he started for the site he had picked for his camp. Tex and Pierre became less and less enthusiastic about the job as they neared the log cabin that served as the office for the McLaren Mining Company. There is nobody working at the sluices, Tex. I do not like the looks of that. We will have to all the work ourselves. I don't like it much either. I I'll tell you what, Pierre. We'll take a look at this Miss McClellan. And if she looks mean at all, we'll just ask for some directions and mosey along. Huh? We, we, that is a good idea. Yeah. Come on, get up, get up, get yeah. up. Oh, 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 oh. oh easy, steady. <laughs> hey, you knock on the door. Kino. Morning. What can I do for you? A man. And what did you think I'd be? A ring-tailed baboon? This sergeant has played a trick on us. Is there a Miss McLaren around here? Why, sure. Why didn't you say that's who you want to see? Uh, Joan. And who are you? I'm Mike Shannon, the manager. That is not good. Who is it, Mike? Ma'am. <laughs> You're Miss McLaren? Well, yes, I'm Joan McLaren. Well, which sir? Yeah, like we, it would be a great pleasure. We'd like nothing better as a oh, matter of fact. Oh, très joli. The money's no object. I'm afraid I don't understand. <laughs> I, uh, I think they're applying for a job. Really? That's right, We oui, à votre service. Well, then hire them by all means. Oh, just a second, Joan. I remember where I've seen these two before. It was around Dawson, and they're as wild as a couple of wolves on a midnight prowl. Mister, nobody can talk about me that way without answering for it. Take off my gun belt. We'll settle this with our fists. Uh, see what I mean? But, Mike, with the way things are, maybe we need men who aren't afraid of a fight. Uh, how do we know Barton didn't send them here? Who are you? Uh, I'm Tex Carson, ma'am. And this is Pierre Gourlay. Ah, votre service. Who is this Barton, ma'am? Jake Barton. He owns the mine on the next creek, and he'd like to own this one. It's because of Jake and his men that we haven't been able to keep anybody working here. You... Barton didn't send you here, did he? Of course he didn't. You don't expect they'd admit it, do you? It was Sergeant Preston who sent us here. The sergeant? Well, that's good enough for me, Mike. You're hired, Tex, and so are you, Ah, <laughs> That's great. Merci. Merci. There'll be more trouble than they're worth. My mind's made up. Oh, all right, Joan. We'll see. Tex and Pierre went to work, and Mike worked them hard. At the end of the first two days, they asked nothing more than to collapse in their bunks. But on the evening of the third day, they had survived their unaccustomed efforts a little better. They were alone in the bunkhouse, and as Pierre cleaned his gun, Tex paced the floor. Pierre, yeah, I'm beginning to figure this all out. So? All this talk about Barton running off the hard hands here. You seen anything of Barton and his men? No. 
I have seen no one but Mike. The beautiful mademoiselle. Mike didn't want to give us a job, did he? No. And he's trying to discourage us from staying, ain't he? We. Oui. He make us work too hard. He just don't want anybody around here but himself. I think he's aiming to steal his mind from that poor little girl. Sacre bleu! We will kill him. No, no. We can't do that yet. We will find the sergeant and tell him. Now, we got to get some evidence before we can bring him into it. Maybe Mike's got some crooked friends hiding out in the hills, just waiting to swoop down on this place. We will kill them. We'll sure defend that poor little girl with our lives, won't we? We. And after we have run off the crooks, and I am dying, the little girl will take my hand and say, Pierre, get up and go to work. Oh, man, no. Don't get so all fired romantic and don't be so anxious to die. Oh, I will recover. Now, listen to me. I figure we better have a showdown with Mike before his crooked friends get here. We, oui, that is good. That is much better. Maybe tonight. We. Oui. Hey, somebody's riding up. It ain't Mike. The first of the crooks. Where's that lariat I was working? On the bunk. Now I've got it. I'm going to duck down here in a corner where he can't see me. You let him in and talk to him. I'll yeah. open him when the right time comes. Oh, get down. He does not wait to be let in. You're covered, mister. What? Who are you? Why do you pull a gun on me? Just to show you I mean business. Where's your partner? What partner do you mean? Don't stall. He is not here. Well, you can tell him for me this is a warning. Both of you clear out of here by tomorrow morning or you'll be dead by tomorrow night. You would kill us? You understand English, don't you? We mean business. <coughs> so do we. What the... Good. You have roped him clean. He cannot move his arms. I'll keep the loop tight. Get his you... gun. We... I have it. Now... Now, ah, we got a few questions to ask you, mister. Who sent you here? Nobody. Come on, talk. It was Mike Shannon, wasn't it? What? You can't fool us. It was Mike Shannon sent you here. Well, as long as you know all about it. We know now. What shall we do with him? Don't shoot. I wasn't really going to do anything. Mike just hired me to put a scare in you. Why, uh, you... Uh, no, please, please don't shoot. Why, you miserable sneaking coward. I wouldn't waste a bullet on you. We'll settle our score with your boss. Get that rope off you. You don't let me go? Yeah. Take off your boots. What? Take them off. Mm, sure. Yeah. Now your pants. My pants? You heard me. Hurry up. Yeah, sure. <laughs> he wears red flannel to match his hair, huh? <laughs> yeah. Now run. Climb aboard that coyote of yours and hightail it out of here. Go on, get moving, you'll stop hot lead. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue our story in just a moment. Everyone loves Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The whole family goes for those famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals. They're shot from guns. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns. Man, oh man, huge guns are loaded with premium grains of wheat or rice. And then... These choice king-size kernels are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Makes Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice crisp and tender as nuts in November. They're shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. And most important, they're nourishing, good for you. Both delicious kinds furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So try delicious, nutritious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. So tasty, so easy to serve, topped with milk or cream and fruit. Enjoy this thrifty deluxe family breakfast tomorrow. And remember, for variety, eat Quaker puffed wheat one day, Quaker puffed rice the next. Remember, too, they're never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always look for the big red and blue Quaker package. Look for the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston was halfway down the ridge trail when he saw the trouserless red-headed man run out of the bunkhouse and leap into his saddle. Oh, fellow, hold steady. Yep. 
He dismounted and led his horse into the cover of the trees at the side of the trail. Quietly. A few minutes later, the red-headed man's horse pounded up the trail past the spot where the sergeant was hidden. Get out there! Come on! Get out there! Get out there! King, that's one of the men we've seen around the Barton mine. I think we'd better follow him. Steady, fellow. Easy. One out. Get up. The sergeant followed the rider as closely as he dared. He lost sight of him, but of course King could follow his trail closely. And nearly half an hour later, the sergeant reached the Barton mine on the far side of the ridge. He dismounted in a grove near the main cabin. The red-headed man had pulled up in front of it. It's dark, King, and the window of that cabin's open. I think we're going to close enough to hear what's going on. Come on. <laughs> the sergeant could hear loud voices coming from the open window. And at last, he and King crouched in the shadows directly below it. I sure picked a fine one to put a scare to those two hands. Not only think you'd get away with your pants, too. I told you how it happened. Why didn't you keep your eyes open? All right, I should have. But you haven't heard all of the story. I've heard enough. No, now, listen, Jake, listen. That crazy Texan and the Frenchman think Mike Shannon is a crook. What? Yeah. They tipped me off to that as soon as they started talking. So I played along with them. The Texan said, Mike sent you here, didn't he? I told him, yes, of course. It's a break for us, don't you see? If they start gunning for Mike... If they get rid of him, then they'll be arrested. There'll be nobody but the girl, and she can't run the mine alone. You can buy it for whatever you want to pay. No, it doesn't work out. Why not? Don't you think the girl will set them straight about Mike? Uh, I'm tired of waiting around. I got a half a dozen ukuloots eating off me, and tonight you're going to earn your keep. How? We're going to get rid of the Texan and the Frenchman, and Mike and the girl. But how? We can't just pump them full of lead and leave them lying there. They'll be found by the police. Police won't find any evidence against us. There's going to be a big fire on McLaren Creek tonight. Now, here's the way we'll work it. All of us. Farrell, Ben, Louie, Mac, Hank, Lefty, you and me. We'll be right over there in about an hour. By that time, they should be asleep. Quiet, King. Okay. We've heard enough. We'll get out of here. King had been told to be quiet. But this was one time he disobeyed. For he knew a man had crept into the shadows near the corner of the cabin. And as the sergeant started to leave... Don't move or I'll shoot. Hey, Jake, that's Farrell. What's he saying? Open your hands. The sergeant realized there was no chance to go for his gun, so he obeyed the man's command. All right, does this suit you? No, King, no. Get away. Go. King would have liked to stay at his master's side, but the sergeant had ordered him to leave. So he raced toward the woods as the man with the gun advanced on the sergeant. All right, mister, get going in the cabin. Keep going and don't turn around. And don't try anything. From the edge of the trees, That's King watched his master being marched into the cabin. And then he dropped to the ground and waited. Inside the cabin, the sergeant still had his hands raised above his head. What was he doing, Phil? He was hunched down underneath the window. Uh, I guess he was listening to what you and Red were saying. What's your name, Missy? For the time being, let's make it uh, Smith. All right, Smith. What did you think of what you heard outside? I think you might get into trouble. Boss, if he knows what we're planning... Shut up. What are you doing around here, Smith? You heard what Farrell said. What brings you to Barton Creek? Well, I thought there might be work for me around here. Looks to me as if that were a good hunch. You mean you want to declare yourself in on our little deal? I am in on it, whether I want to be or not. How do you figure that? Well, I'd rather be in on it than dead. <laughs> You're a cool customer, aren't you? I say get rid of him. Tie him up, Pharaoh. Okay. Hands and feet. Make sure the knots are tight. What are you going to do with him? Leave him here until we get back. Then what? Well, that depends on you. I want to find out all about you. There's a chance I'll take you on. Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. Come on. Put your hands behind your back. Pleasure. The sergeant was bound hand and foot and left lying on the floor of the cabin. He could hear Jake and his men saddling their horses outside. Finally, they rode away. Then the sergeant called for King. King, come here, boy. A few seconds later, the great dog leaped through the window of the cabin. Good boy. Here, King, chew these ropes. We have to move fast. King went to work on the ropes around the sergeant's wrists. Five minutes later, his hands were free. He pulled himself across the floor to the table and stood up. He found a knife in the drawer and cut the ropes around his ankles. Come on, boy. 
Then he ran from the cabin with King at his heels. On the far side of the ridge, Tex and Pierre had put out the lamp in the bunkhouse and were standing, their backs to the wall, on either side of the door. Why does Mike not come? We saw the light go out in the office. Maybe he stopped at Jones' cabin. Here he is. Quiet. I'll grab him from behind. You get his gun. We. Oui. As Mike entered the bunkhouse, Tex leaped on him and pulled both his arms behind him. At the same instant, Pierre had his gun. But Mike was by no means helpless, and he tried to break free. What's going on here? You'll find out soon enough. Let go of me. You can't hold him, Pierre. Give it to him. We. Oui. Pierre hit Mike in the back of the ear with the butt of Mike's own gun, and the big man slumped the floor. It was ten minutes before he regained consciousness, and when he raised his head, he found that he was sitting in a chair, his arms tied behind it. The lamp had been lit, and Tex and Pierre stood in front of him. Uh, what's the idea? What's the idea of tying me up this way? Your red-headed friend should have reported to you before he lit out. What? What are you talking about? I guess he was scared to tell you what he told us, oh, huh? my head. You will feel worse before we finish with you. Where's your gang had not, Mike? What gang? We know. The redhead told us. You want to get rid of us. You want to steal the mine from the little girl. I give up. It is a good thing. We are going to find the sergeant, and he will take you to jail. Look, I've always figured you two were crazy, but now you're abusing the privilege. Make a little sense. What gives you the idea I'm trying to steal the mine? You make everybody quit. Wait. Wait a minute. A redhead, you said. There was a man with red hair who came here tonight. You know there was. Red Clifford, from the Barton outfit. He said it worked for you. He told you that unless you cleared out, you'd stop lead. Do not try to play the innocent. Tex Pierre, please believe me. Red Clifford works for Barton. Go and ask Joan. She'll tell you. Joan. The little girl. Quick, cut these ropes. We've got to find out what's the matter. I'll find out. Jake Barton and the redhead. Yeah, I'll pick up their guns, boss. All right, hurry it up. Mike Willie, get some ropes around the Texan and the French. Why, you know it. Why bother with ropes? A few bullets will save time. What have you done to Joan? (laughs) What have you done to her? All set, boss. Say, Pharaoh, Mike wants to know what you've done to Joan. Tell him. She's tied up the same way you are, Mike. What? Only she's gagged, You dirty... Shut up. Come on, hurry it up, Lou. All right, come on. All right, let go of my arm. Well, fellow, well, steady. The sergeant dismounted a hundred yards up the trail from the McLaren camp and then started down through the trees toward the bunkhouse. He had seen Jake's men and their horses out in front of the building, but there had been no sign of fire. The woods grew all the way down to the back of the building. We're going to be in time, King. We can get in through that back window and Jake's men won't see us. We didn't hear any shots. If Mike and Tex and Pierre are still alive, we'll get them out of there. But as the Sergeant King neared the rear window of the bunkhouse, they could hear the men inside calling for help, and smoke began to pour from the window. Come on, King. As the Sergeant ran, he tied a handkerchief around his face. Without hesitating, he climbed through the window. King jumped through after him. The front of the building was already in flames, and by the light of the fire, he could see the bodies of three men on the floor. Somebody just came through the window. It is the Sergeant. I'll have you free in a second. And, and what? There's no one out and back. We can get out that way and they won't see us. Yeah, thanks. Sergeant, they've got Joan tied up over in her cabin. Oh. Have they set fire to that, too? No, not yet. Yeah. We'll keep to the woods until we get to the back of it. There's a back door, isn't it? Oh, yes. You can get in without showing yourself. Do you have a gun, Sergeant? No. If they do, so... you can't let them. Come on. We're with you. Come on. <laughs> the three men followed the sergeant out the rear window. And once among the trees on the ridge slope, they headed for Joan's cabin. The burning bunkhouse was lighting the sky, but the cabin was some distance away, and the men sprinted from the cover of the trees to the back door. Her bedroom's the door to the left. Right. There she is. I'll take that gag off. Oh, Mike. You're all right now. Sergeant Barton's gang, they're still here. Yes, there you are. I'll help you up. Thank you. Can you walk all right? Oh, yes. Good. Get her out of here, Mike. Up the ridge. What about you? Aren't you coming, too? No. But you have no gun. They'll be coming in here, and they won't be expecting to find me. Or us. You and Pierre can stay if you want to. We, we have been stupid. We think Mike is trying to steal the mine from Joan. What? When all the time he is in love with her and wants to marry her. You do, Mike? You can talk about that up on the ridge. Hurry. Come on, darling. We must make it up to them, Sergeant, for all the trouble we make. You'll get your chance. This way, in the front room. Jake and his men watched the fire until the roof of the bunkhouse fell in. Hey! Well, that does it. Now the girls, Kevin. Get up there. Get up. Get up. The men urged their mounts along the bank of the creek, intent on finishing their murderous chore. 
Jake rode in front of the others, was the first to rein up in front of the cabin and the first to leap from the saddle. Did you see any cool oil in here, Pharaoh? Uh, there must be something in the kitchen. All right, come on. Jake was also the first one through the door, but he had only taken one step before he dropped to the floor. Boss! Boss! As Farrell knelt over Jake, the sergeant brought a piece of wood down on his head. I've got Jake's gun. Got Farrell's text. Yeah, I got it. Here come the others. Drag these two out of the way, Pierre. Go ahead, King. Let them all get into the room, Tex. All right, sergeant. Come on, come on. Let's get over it. Boss, where are you? Up with your hands, all of you. Hey, who's that? Don't what try to turn around. Just drop your guns and raise your hands. I know that voice. We've met before, yes. All right, Pierre, light the lamp. Me, we. Pierre! And the Texan! That's right, Red. And Smith! Oh, and The name is Preston. Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. You're all under arrest in the name of the Queen. The Frenchman and the Texan. They were tied up in the bunkhouse. We left you tied up at Jake's. My dog set me free, Red. What? Yeah, Red. And the sergeant got us out the back window of the bunkhouse. Now, now, now look, sergeant. You know this was all Jake's idea. You were all in on it. And now all of you are going to jail for attempted murder. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Here's how Mother can make your family a breakfast-happy family this coming weekend. Be sure to order Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Just one bowlful of this swell-tasting, ready-to-serve cereal shot from guns, and you'll say nothing tastes so swell, except maybe two bowlfuls. But mind you... To get the original, crisp, fresh, wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big Quaker red and blue package. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is never sold in bags or bulk. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case Escape to the North. Luke McGowan was wanted for murder. It was my job to find him and bring him in to face trial. The trail was one of the longest and hardest I've ever known. It led to a camp of savage Indians who turned on me with bows and arrows. I thought my time had come, but, well, mighty surprising things happened to bring an unexpected end to this adventure. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. You boys or girls will certainly want to feed your dog kennel ration. And your dog will really eat up kennel ration fast. It's made with choice cuts of lean red meat. U.S. government inspected horse meat. This famous dog food contains vital minerals and all known dog health vitamins your dog needs. Tell mom to start with kennel ration right away. See how happy your dog is when he gets this food he loves. Have mom get kennel ration. First in canned dog food. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.